Last time on the Sonic Mania video review. A group of fans was hired by Sega to make an original pixel art Sonic game called Sonic Mania. After nearly a decade of soulless, hollow nostalgia pandering, Sonic Mania finally gave Classic Sonic the justice it deserved. But its levels and bosses tended to overstay their welcome. Could the release of the new and improved Sonic Mania Plus help polish up the original's rough edges? The video review continues today on Better Late Than Never Video Games. So I'll be real with you, viewers. I could have waited to publish my original Sonic Mania review after the release of Sonic Mania Plus, but I was banking on the fact that not a whole lot would change regarding my complaints. That decision was informed by a leak of at least some of Sonic Mania Plus on the PlayStation 4 in April of 2018. Though it was not a final build of the game, it did provide an idea of the updates Sonic Mania would receive. Primarily, there were two major differences. The first being the ability to disable the 10-minute timeout for levels, and the second being a reworked fight against Metal Sonic. Though we were told to expect more in the final version of the game, I hunkered down and worked on my video review, feeling confident we had seen the biggest changes in Sonic Mania Plus. With the finished release of Plus now in my hands, I can confirm this to be true. The ability to disable the 10-minute timeout is a welcome addition, but it's clearly not the intended way to play the game, given you must manually disable the timer every time you return to the file select menu, which is pretty annoying. And the reworked fight against Metal Sonic? Well... On the plus side, the first three phases of the fight have been shortened, particularly Phase 2. Before, the only way to damage the boss was to bounce these little Silver Sonic guys up into metal, leading to some initial confusion. Now, bopping them will shoot a spread of little bullets that can damage Metal Sonic, on top of this phase also taking fewer hits to clear. It's a welcome change that makes the whole sequence go a lot faster. Metal Sonic's final phase has been completely overhauled, now bringing in a version of Metal Sonic Kai from Knuckles Chaotix. Unfortunately, this is now the weakest part of the fight, as it is incredibly easy to get stuck inside the boss and bounced into the instant death pit located behind him. Just like with many of the bosses in the original Sonic Mania, it's a cool reference that isn't very fun to fight. That left one question. What of the game's new Encore mode? If you already own Sonic Mania, it will run you about $5 to buy the Sonic Mania Plus upgrade. Plus comes with new playable characters Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel, in addition to the new Encore mode. As DLC and Season Pass prices soar ever higher, $5 for two new characters and a remixed campaign mode might seem like a steal. The unfortunate truth is that, taken by itself, Encore mode is pretty weak. Don't get me wrong, Mighty and Ray are plenty fun to play as. Mighty's abilities are all about defense. While spinning, he has invulnerability to spikes and projectiles, making him a good option for players that are easily frustrated. He trades that defense for reduced mobility, as every other member of the cast has some way to go vertical. Knuckles can climb up, Ray and Tails can fly, and Sonic can use the magnet or bubble shields to extend his jump. Mighty, on the other hand, can only go down slamming himself into the ground so hard that nearby enemies take damage. It puts him at a disadvantage when it comes to the game's more vertically oriented challenges. Ray is very technical, combining elements of Tails and Knuckles together into one of the most agile characters in the game. Instead of gliding in a straight line like Knuckles, Ray's glide is more about diving down to pick up speed and then pulling up again to regain height. In the right hands, Ray easily outmaneuvers everyone else in the game, but his downside is that he is completely vulnerable while gliding. Touching walls, even touching the top of the screen, will force Ray back into a spin, requiring you to plant your feet on the ground before you can start a new glide. 
This can make Ray difficult to use, but oh so rewarding to master. The problem is, the game wasn't designed for their inclusion, and it shows. They play just fine in existing levels, but only a couple of new routes were added from Mighty Slam, and they are easily missed. Fun as they might be, they don't dramatically change the feel of these levels, and all they do is serve as an excuse to replay Sonic Mania yet again. The same could be said of the new Encore mode itself. Build as a remix of the game's campaign, it features altered level layouts, but picking out what's been changed can be a bit of a struggle. Many of the differences are subtle, and in the bigger picture, all of these levels feel nearly identical to their original versions, with vast swaths of their layouts going completely unmodified. The only real noticeable changes are in each level's color palette, which paint zones with new colors. Some of them look fantastic, like Green Hill Zone at sunset, or Mirage Saloon at night, but many of them end up looking like someone messed up the color setting on your TV. If the levels themselves aren't different enough, at least the special stages are. Encore Mode includes seven brand new UFO Chase stages, each one awarding you yet another one of the seven Chaos Emeralds. Though these new special stages share graphics with the original seven, their layouts are completely different and significantly more difficult. Also new is a pinball minigame replacing the original game's Blue Spheres mode. Speaking as someone who is sick to death of the original Blue Spheres minigame, it's a welcome replacement, but the pinball table feels barren and the layout is clumsy, making it difficult to aim shots. Still, anything's better than more Blue Spheres. The actual draw of Encore Mode is the new tag mechanic. Encore Mode lets you buddy up with any other character in the game, with your partner following behind you like Tails. You can then switch back and forth between your partner by pressing a button, allowing you to use the abilities of the two characters. It's a cool system, but it has quirks that keep it from truly shining. For starters, Encore Mode prevents you from switching characters in certain scenarios, often because the game simply thinks they're too far away. Plus, when you switch, you instantly teleport to wherever the other character is currently located, which isn't always where you want to be. The tag system should have learned lessons from Donkey Kong Country, where swapping between Donkey Kong and Diddy retains the player's current position no matter where the other player is being tagged in from. Also part of this tag system is the new way in which Encore Mode handles lives. Instead of the classic lives system, Encore Mode makes you rescue the four other characters. By collecting a character's icon from a 1-up box, they get added to your lineup. If the character you're currently playing as runs out of rings and dies, rather than resetting back to your last checkpoint, the next character in line simply jumps in and the stage keeps going. If you completely run out of characters, only then is it a game over. It's an interesting system, but it sort of trivializes parts of the game. It definitely makes tackling bosses a lot easier as even if you die a few times, the fight never resets. It's a fun idea to mess around with in Encore mode, but it would need further refinement before I'd want a whole game by itself that played like this. And that's kind of it. $5 gets you two new playable characters tacked onto the experience, and a slightly different retread of the original campaign. Though it initially sounded like a great deal, in retrospect, $5 is probably the maximum I'd be willing to pay for Encore Mode. As part of the larger $30 Sonic Mania Plus, I guess it's fine, I just kind of expected more. This comes nearly a whole year after the release of the original Sonic Mania. And even for a small team, you'd think more would have been possible. In particular, I was hoping for something regarding Sonic Mania's secret final boss, Egg Reverie. The presence of an extra, unused song in the original Sonic Mania suggested there may have been more planned for the game's final boss that was left on the cutting room floor. In my opinion, Egg Reverie is up there with some of the worst final bosses in the Sonic franchise. It's slow, difficult to control, and just doesn't feel especially climactic. Contrary to some of Sonic Mania's other bosses, adding another phase to Egg Reverie might have helped the game finish on a higher note. It could have also helped tie up one last loose end. In entertainment, there is a term called Chekhov's Gun. 
Named for its creator Anton Chekhov, the most simplistic explanation is that if you intentionally show the audience a gun, then you must later show that gun being used. Essentially, it's about understanding an audience's expectations, following through on those expectations, and only showing things that are useful to the story you're telling. And Sonic Mania contains a huge Chekhov's gun that it never fires. All throughout the back half of the game, you catch glimpses of a massive robot. Diagrams for it turn up on video screens, it looms large on the horizon in metallic madness, and it's a constant presence in the background of the game's final level, Titanic Monarch Zone. Sonic Mania focuses so much of your attention on this robot that I expected it had to have a function. And after you beat the game's final boss, you just watch this giant robot explode, having never even budged an inch. For a game obsessed with being the ultimate in fan service, it is an incredibly underwhelming ending. Sonic Mania Plus was a chance to fix that, and it didn't. Instead, the game almost feels more unfinished now than it did before. There are bugs in Sonic Mania Plus that have been there since the original August 2017 release, and still haven't been fixed yet. That's on top of new bugs, like getting stuck inside of walls in Encore Mode because you tagged your partner character at the wrong time. Encore Mode also goes out of its way to set itself up as a completely new story, taking place after the events of the original game, but it doesn't do anything with that premise. After the opening sequence, it replays all of the same cutscenes from the base game, all the way up until you get to the end of Titanic Monarch Zone. Here, if you finish Encore Mode without collecting the seven Chaos Emeralds, the bad ending implies there may be more waiting for you after you finish Titanic Monarch. Finishing Encore Mode with the seven Emeralds reveals a cutscene where the Phantom Ruby goes on a rampage, destroying everything. And then the credits just roll. It all adds up to feeling like something is missing, and instead of Sonic Mania Plus filling in the blanks, it just makes those blanks even bigger. I can understand if you think I'm being harsh on Sonic Mania, but I want you to know that I'm only harsh because I care. I am a game developer myself, and I've been experimenting with making my own game since 1998. I have learned a lot of lessons over the last 20 years. When I criticize Sonic Mania's pacing, or what it does or does not do with its boss fights, it's not because I think the game is too difficult or whatever, it's because I want it to be even better. People can call me jealous, and like I said in the previous video, there definitely is a little bit of jealousy here, but Sonic Mania is more than just a success for the handful of developers directly involved in it. It's also a success for the communities that spawned it. Sonic Mania represents validation for hundreds or even thousands of people who spent weekends off from school making fan games. There were a lot of hopes and dreams writing on this game, leaving some pretty big shoes to fill. Now, I realize that's an unfair amount of responsibility, and maybe not even a responsibility that the developers of Sonic Mania are actually beholden to, but what I'm trying to get at is this. If it could be better, shouldn't it be better? Shouldn't every game be the absolute best it possibly can be? Now, video games have finite budgets and hard deadlines to meet. You can't let your game sit in development limbo forever, or else it risks becoming something like Daikatana, or Too Human, or Duke Nukem Forever. There are limitations to what can be done in the time and resources allotted. But Sonic Mania also displays a level of excess in certain parts of its design that most other games on the market do not. It did not just go above and beyond, it went too far. It needed to be reeled in. The length problems I explained in part one of this review just don't exist in the other 16-bit Sonic games. If you were to take the four main classic Sonic games, plus Sonic Mania, and found the average size of a level for each game, you'd see just how much bigger Sonic Mania's levels really are. Not only is the average Mania level approaching four times the size of a Sonic 1 level, but even compared to its closest relative, Sonic & Knuckles, Sonic Mania's levels are still over 15% larger. If that doesn't sound like a lot, consider this. If you add all 84 of Classic Sonic's levels together, from all four 16-bit console games, Sonic Mania's levels average out to nearly twice the size of the era it's paying tribute to. 
That's not an opinion, that's objective hard data measured pixel by pixel. The opinion is whether or not you're okay with that. And for someone like me, who likes to punctuate the spectacle of going fast with moments of slower, more methodical exploration, Sonic Mania just takes too dang long. Did we really need 32 different Blue Sphere stages? No, but Sonic Mania did it anyway. On top of having the most levels out of any classic Sonic game. On top of having the longest levels out of any classic Sonic game. And all Sonic Mania Plus does is pile even more stuff on top of the stack. Here's two more playable characters to replay the entire campaign with again, even though the game wasn't built to support them. And here, replay all of Sonic Mania a sixth time. But this time, Hydro City is orange instead of blue. For someone who felt worn down by the original, Sonic Mania Plus has officially made me sick of this game. Which sucks! Because in spite of my complaining and nitpicks, there's a lot to like here. The music is fantastic. The quality of the animation is incredible. The art direction and the characterization perfectly encapsulates what made Sonic so cool. Mirage Saloon, Studiopolis, and Press Garden buck the generic archetypes that have plagued so many other Sonic levels. The level designs themselves actually understand what make controlling Sonic so fun. The UFO Chase special stages are brilliant and unique, amid so many other throwback games just recycling the Sonic 2 special stage. An incredible amount of talent and care went into Sonic Mania, from a team that very clearly spent a long time thinking about what it was that made them love this series. And I love that! But as much as I hate to say it, I think less would have been more. Bigger is not always better. There are limitations you have to respect. Eventually something gets so big that it just starts to feel unwieldy. You out there watching this might think I'm crazy for saying such a thing, given the universal praise Sonic Mania has received from basically everywhere else on the internet. And my reply to that is this. I've been in your shoes. I used to come home, load up Quake 3 Arena, set the frag limit to 500, and that would be my evening. The same map, the same 11 bots, for hours and hours and hours. The longer a game lasted, the better. At some point, all of that changed. That doesn't mean Quake 3 stopped being fun, it just means I started valuing my time better. Sonic Mania doesn't always respect my ability to do that, and in a way that's at odds with the games it references. My verdict on Sonic Mania is complex because my feelings are complex. My thoughts about Sonic Mania were never going to fit neatly into a black or white, love it or hate it definition. And I never really meant to say that Sonic Mania was a bad game anyway. Far from it, it's actually quite good. Some would say it's the best Sonic game of the last 25 years. And regardless of what you might actually believe, the fact that I still struggle to truly enjoy it kills me a little bit on the inside. I want to unconditionally love Sonic Mania, but it's merely okay. It could have been better. Whether or not that matters is up to you, but for me, at least I'll always have Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Thanks for watching. Shoutouts go out to Chingy Nerd for usage of his Ray the Flying Squirrel speedrun footage and to Ryan Langley for usage of footage from the fan game Sonic Boom, which was the first recorded Sonic fan game from all the way back in 1995. It's so old that it doesn't actually run on Windows 10, so I had to borrow Ryan's footage. Big thanks to Sega for sending over a PlayStation 4 review copy of Sonic Mania Plus. Videos like this one also wouldn't be possible without all of the wonderful support from my Patreon donors, like Logan A, Brando, Thomas G, Connor F, Setsune, Dave M, Rose S, Juan Pablo, Keith S, Lucas B, Tom B, Connor S, Ryan M, Fiesta, Anders M, Sam S, Ashley J, Tekokami, Stephen, or is it Stefan? I never really asked. And of course, Ryan L. Yes, the same one who let me borrow his Sonic Boom footage. If you'd like to join their ranks, just visit patreon.com slash blazehedgehog. 
Donors get early access to podcasts, plus exclusive content like bloopers, games, downloadable music, and secret videos. Plus, I may even read your name out loud during one of these credit sequences. All you have to do is visit patreon.com slash blazehedgehog to learn more. There's also the usual social media stuff, and my Tumblr blog where I answer viewer questions. You can also subscribe to this channel if that tickles your fancy, because it certainly tickles mine. Whatever the case may be, I'll see you in the next video. Whatever that'll be.